India is a, a very diverse country, both in uh, the sense of cultural diversity and also biological diversity. India is also unique in that almost 75% or even more of the population are very close to the poverty level or be even below subsistence level. Therefore, we have a problem of meeting with the food security of more than 75% of the population. And this uh, problem is aggravated in recent times because of two important phenomena that have been overtaking the world and one in a socio-ecological sense is the phenomenon of global change and the global change involves a whole variety of issues land use land cover changes land degradation land desertification and um, increase in poverty and subsistence ex uh, existence of a vast majority of the population and the Indian context we are talking about more than three-fourths of the total population who are <coughs> at that level who are under threat and therefore we have a great challenge in the Indian context compared to many other developed na nations of the world. We have also a rich heritage of what I term as very traditional societies. Very often they are termed in the Indian context as tribal societies or the forest dwellers who are living very close to nature and natural resources where nature and natural resources are relatively better preserved. They are dependent upon agriculture or varied types of land use practices and traditional knowledge forms a very important basis for addressing a whole range of their sustainability issues. In the name of modernization, what we are, the people who are living, who are educated, who are city dwellers are trying to do is has been attempting to do in recent times for a very long period of time has been to convert these people to a way, way of life that we understand and appreciate and therefore they can participate in that process of development which of course has been a very ineffective way of dealing with the problem because the traditional societies are very closely linked with nature and natural resources and therefore their cultural values are very closely linked with the biological diversity in which they are located. We need to understand that traditional ecological knowledge, try to put scientific meanings into it in the modern sense of the term and integrated into the textbook based knowledge and textbook based technologies that we are familiar with as, as scientists, as a modern society. The modern knowledge alone is not sufficient to address a whole range of sustainability issues. It may give you quick productivity on a short term basis, but it is not sustainable on a long term basis. On the other hand, the traditional societies, based upon their traditional knowledge, they know how to maintain productivity at a reasonably good level on a long term basis, but may not be at a very high level. So the challenge is how do we link together the two knowledge systems, the traditional knowledge with the formal knowledge in order to create what I call as the hybrid technology. A technology which 
ensures high productivity and at the same time it ensures long term sustainability of the system. Uh, this was a challenge that was thrown before me when I was living in the North East for more than uh, working in the North Eastern region for more than half a century uh, with the local traditional societies. And uh, uh, coincidentally a few million dollars came from uh, a program called as the India Canada Environmental Facility. A project was initiate, initiated in Nagaland called as the in India Canada Environmental Facility project in which all the few hundred ethnic groups that Nagaland is composed of participated. The communities were organized into village development boards and these village development boards were not developed on a uniform pattern. Every ethnic group has their own f way of building up their societies. They have their own way of institutional institution building. So if there are in Nagaland for example there are 200 ethnic groups, there are 200 ways of institution building. But all the institutions have got one function namely to participate in a developmental process. So what we did was we used the traditional ways of institution building as an important basis and used the elective process that the modern societies have for institution building as also one of the processes or in other words we created a kind of a hybrid institution which is partly based upon an elective process and partly based upon the traditional ways of institution building. And these village development boards were given the function of ensuring community participation in land use management. And more than a couple of hundred ethnic groups living in that region participated in a process and they were able to develop their land use practices based on a value system that they, are, they were able to understand and appreciate and at the same time get four to five times more yield from their land or in other words the productivity of the land increased and their livelihood requirements were met with adequately <coughs> and in the in the state like Nagaland for example where insurgency was very prevalent at one point of time the insurgents came around and they themselves participated in this developmental process and uh, the peace returned to the society and therefore it had got a many fold implications from the point of view of the de development of the society not only from the point of view of economic development but also social and cultural development of the society as a whole.